Hello and welcome to K Stop, Fuse's K pop podcast. Thanks, guys, for joining in every week. As always, this is Jeff Benjamin, and with the Jessica Jung to my fabulous, it's Tina. <laughs> Hi, I did not expect that. Because we're an unexpected combo, just Jess- like Jessica, Jessica and Fab. Fab. That's a whole new. <laughs> Jessica and Loso, come on. All right. Just hey so y'all. you know so. Um, welcome to K-Stop. Yes, welcome, welcome. Thank you, as always, for tuning in every week. We have so much fun with you guys. Um, yes, we, 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 um, we, we actually just want to get right into it because we have so many um, fun things to get to today. And as always, as we always say, we love to talk to you guys about all things K-pop and K-Stop. And you guys always comment every week, which is why we kick it off with Reader. Um, comments and and reactions so yeah all the good stuff and you guys know exactly how you can get in uh quick housekeeping things you know feel free as always to hit us up on twitter with the hashtag case stop i'm at jeff underscore underscore benjamin and i'm at hey underscore tina with three a's and as always you know it really helps us when you guys leave ratings on itunes or leave us a comment you know if they're positive of course but why wouldn't they be but um leave us a comment on fuse.tv we see it all we see it all so um i want to get right into it because we talked about this last week about how um we had mario uh you know long time r&b star r&b pop star come into mm-hmm. fuse uh recently and i you know i was teasing it last week but now it's been released that he was on this Asian tour and met up with girl group Bestie and he announced his plans to he wants to break uh, the member Yuji in in America so real quick uh, let's go to the clip real quick for anyone who hasn't heard it yet here is Mario telling Fuse um, first about uh, his plans to break Bestie's Yuji in America this whole Asia trip that I just embarked on I think my favorite was probably Korea but I love Japan as well but Korea was my favorite they love the true art and they appreciate it and they there's real talent. Like if one of the girls I had singing for me over there, you'd be blown away. You don't expect it to come from the, that type of voice to come out of them. You could tell that they grew up listening to like some of the greatest we have here. Like I was like, wow, like the world needs to hear that. You know, how I'm trying to figure out now, how do I break a, a solo amazing Korean girl artist in America? Like how do I make that happen? Because it's She's amazing. Her name is Yuji. She's in a group called Bestie. She's really, really dope. So we're, we're going to make that happen. Yeah, for sure. I went to one of the concerts in L.A. and it was, it was like packed. They sold out two shows. So I was like, wow. That's definitely, you know, something that inspires me just in terms of bringing that culture here. It'd be cool. You know what I'm saying? It's good for music. As long as, my thing is this. If it's good music and it's real talent, why not? So that was that. I got a really big reaction. I remember when I, when, when I, at least when I shared that on Twitter. And I want to go to a com- We got a comment from Stephen Knight at Tennessee Appeal on Twitter, and he wrote to me. Um, on, he wrote hashtag K Stop topic regarding Mario and Yuji. The track record of U.S. pop stars introducing K-pop girl groups to the U.S. is not good. If SM JYP, Scooter Braun, and Interscope can't do it. Why would Chris Brown, Mario, or even Gaga be able to do it? Which those are that's a very legit <laughs> point. He clearly, <laughs> he's got the history down right. pat. <laughs> um, you know that that is a good point. Um, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> there's clearly so it hasn't you know totally worked. Um, I would say some of them are still to be determined, maybe. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, I'll be 100% honest. This, it's not going to be easy for them. If this is really, like, a real plan, um, and, it, you know, everything he said makes it sound like, yes, it is, um, it's certainly not going to be easy because I'm not – I don't think she is, like, a native English speaker. Right. Um, I don't – I think – Mario's clout in the industry is maybe not as strong as it once was. But who knows? He's got a new album coming out. Maybe he'll be Mm -hmm. back at the top. You you never know. But I do think, you know, that there are, you know, he certainly has ways of getting into the industry, making connections in the industry. You know, a lot of these things are all about connections, who you know, opportunity, And And, like, you hit on two very important points here. You know, the first being... Um, Yuji, she doesn't speak English natively, and that will always be a hurdle um, Mm -hmm. when you're trying to sell yourself in an industry whose, you know, native language you don't speak. So it's hard to 
you, you can release a track and, you know, phonetically memorize all the lyrics on the tr- this English track that that you'd be putting out. But, you know, you can't really promote it the way the same way that you would promote it in um, in, you know, the native country who, that you're from, yeah. whose language that you speak. Um, and then the second important point is it's you you can't just be like. I'm American, so because I have ties in the American industry, I want to do this, so hopefully that will happen. It's like, yeah. it's not in any way discrediting what Mario's trying to do. Yeah. It's just more like when it's when the two industries are so different, and especially with Asian artists historically, traditionally not yeah. doing as well in the American market as opposed to like, you know, um, in film and television, you right. know, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 I would, I almost think that you would need to be like a huge name promoting someone who maybe doesn't have to be huge mm. in K pop, but they would have to have a special hook to them. Yeah. That they can't just be any K pop star because there are so many K pop stars in yeah. Korea that are all pretty much of one note. Sure. You can't just be like, I like you and you're, I think you sound great and I would like to bring you over and, and, you know, help you become successful, successful here. That's just not how it works. Like if that's how it works, like so many more people would be successful here, not just from K-pop, but also J-pop and which J-pop also has a huge following, you know, overseas. So right. it's, you know, it, I almost, I almost feel like it would have to be like, a huge huge name here in r&b and hip-hop or i guess or it can be pop too obviously um you know it's just it's just a tough call it's but. It, yeah well 100 percent. it's a really tough call and you know it might be you know the only kind of way i, I mean i think yeah steven you nailed it with like the history and you know this hasn't worked but i think if there was maybe if there's a certain avenue he's approaching it as maybe if he really wants to corner and you know an r&b market and they really have some tracks that they are you know really feeling and you know that could get her name out there but yeah it's um especially i i do think it's a little almost like a, a you know assuming that you know an artist can break another artist i think that's really tough to do i think mm-hmm. you know there's a lot more factors involved than just right. you know so. just a simple cosign isn't <laughs> gonna do it like <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i mean once again you know always rooting for like you know that day you know when it, it inevitably happens because it's going to happen if it's mm-hmm. not if it's not ug it's going to be someone else um you know when we finally get that you know when we finally see an asian pop star like you know to represent yet a large majority, you know, minority in America. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah, I don't know what, what it is, when it is, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, 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 there was a lot of, there, there, I'll say there, there was a mixed reaction when I, when I posted that online and, um, you know, from, from people being like, yes, to what the heck, you know, is right. this, I was not expecting this. So, right. but I thought this comment was particularly um, on point. So yeah, thank you yeah, for the thank comment. you for yeah bringing that to our attention. Another one we wanted to mention came from at Darmini, uh, who mentioned on Twitter that um, they thought it was really interesting how BTS's new compilation album was an exclusive to Apple Music. Um, she mentioned most international fans buy, not stream, to help the artist. Is this going to be a new K-pop trend? Um, and I thought this was kind of an interesting point because I think you know I didn't every, know that 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 was an exclusive stream. <laughs> it, well, here, well, so uh, the the terminology is so confusing. Everyone's talking about streaming services now. It was available on iTunes and Apple Music. Apple Music, obviously, being the streaming service, right. iTunes being for purchase. Um, and I was looking at the chart numbers because uh, last week they charted on the Billboard 200, and they only sold like. 2,500 copies or something, which Mm -hmm. wouldn't have charted them otherwise, but they sold so many singles and they got so much streaming on Apple Music that they ended up charting because of that. So I thought that was really interesting because it was, it was like a $27 album. I was like, who is buying? Oh my gosh. But you know, good, good for them. (laughs) But, um, but on that same note, I thought it was interesting that BTS teamed up with Apple because if, I don't know if anyone was watching it, but like BTS got really good homepage placement. Mm-hmm. Like that was when 
Beyonce and Drake just dropped. Like right. they were. Re- it was like Beyonce. It was like Drake, Beyonce, and then the BTS album right, like, right. on the featured stuff. And I was like, right. dang, this is good homepage <laughs> placement. Right. I mean, like if you're just if you're speaking solely on if we're not talking about charting and just simply promotion, yeah. then. You know, I would hope that if you're partnering up with Apple, that they would put you on the homepage somewhere or <laughs> right. give you a little bit extra, you know, FaceTime on on the carousel, or whatnot. Yeah. But um, no, that's really interesting, and it's. I mean, I. But you're right. It's or um, commenter Darmini is correct. It's not K-pop isn't a traditionally streaming big on streaming um, big on streaming. um yeah the fans who support usually do buy the album but there are a lot of fans who aren't strictly bts fans like i'm i'm, I'm not a stan for bts but i love their music and um you know if if that's just another ch- platform on which i can access that artist i don't see why not yeah and it, you know it's kind of i'll be kind of interested to see if this becomes a trend moving forward, you know, kind of how they were saying, like, will this be a new trend? Well, like maybe, you know, YG artists will start being exclusive to Spotify or Tidal or something like that. You know, it's like kind of everyone's all about these streaming wars and who's exclusive to who. Personally, I hope everyone stays on Apple Music (laughs) because I love Apple Music, but. Apple is definitely the more K-pop friendly platform. Um, You know, for the most part, they're all released on there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So personally, I hope this. That's actually, that was actually a big reason why I moved to Apple Music. I was a Spotify boy for a while. Now I'm all about Apple Music and it's a big part of it is because of K-pop. Yeah, no, it's a struggle all the time for me to (laughs) to decide whether I want to stay on Spotify just because like, you know, the the UX is so familiar to me and I just like the way it runs a little better. Um, so yeah, but that's another conversation. <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but let us know which one you guys are uh, are feeling more. If it's Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. I don't know. It's kind of interesting because international fans, the struggle is real. I yeah. remember used to like going to like websites where like they'd oh, list yeah, it like used to be like who- <laughs> megaupload.com where I would download everything, direct download or purchase if I so felt you know like it. Right. Yeah, now it's, I guess... Now at least now there are options. Now it's just, like, sometimes YouTube just to get a preview, you know. <laughs> but mostly, like, I feel like Apple pretty much dominates, K, you know, K-pop in overseas, at least. Yeah. So, love you, Apple. <laughs> and then last but not least, we wanted to mention um, Sasha Estrada Villarin from Satan Hall University. Um, she left a comment on last week's episode page on Fuse.tv where we were talking about SM Entertainment and their new EDM label. And we asked you guys some of your favorite um, K-pop EDM collaborations. And she wanted to let us know. I, I liked this comment. She said, Gotta say my favorite EDM K-pop collab would have to be Bowers Track Temple with MIA and G-Dragon. Definitely recommend the Zen Meditation intro to the hard-hitting beat that comes in and creates like a really cool mix. Um, so first off, I really love that description. Those like words were like spot on. Yes. I love, I love how you described that. So are you a writer? Because if not, you should be. <laughs> and then the second part of the comments, I really, really love case. I would look forward to every episode. You guys are so much fun to listen to. Your comments are exciting and refreshing and entertaining. This reminds me why I got into and still love K-pop. So Aww. that was really nice to hear because sometimes everyone needs that reminder. Yeah. Like, you know, oh my gosh. Like yeah, sometimes thank it's you for that. so much. We and you try. Know. We, 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 we're glad that like our conversations bring like some form of entertainment or amusement or, you know, connection to, to some listeners. Yes, because yes, I feel you. Sometimes you just need that reminder. You're like, why am I so obsessed with this? Oh yeah. Yeah, That's absolutely. Why. Yeah. <laughs> so Yay, love that we comment. hope you continue to to listen yeah. to us and follow our our entertaining episodes or I guess. <laughs> yes, please do guys, because yes, we love hearing back from you guys and we love chatting with you guys. So let's just get right into it. Yeah. We're getting into our first section, the music section. And Tina, what's first on the agenda? Well, I, I'm pretty sure if we don't start with Miss Jessica Jung, you would just mm. start with her anyway, <laughs> since she's your girl. Since she's on my mind for the <laughs> intro. Yeah, because we've been we've been dying to like have her release come out. So, yeah. um, you know, since they've been kind of hinting at it for so long, and right. she's you know been solo for a while. So, yeah. so here she is. You know, almost you know not exact almost two ye- about like less than two years since she was. 
kicked out slash departed slash still unsure what happened to her uh in girls generation you know the group is now an eight member group and jessica's on her own been doing focus on her fashion brand but also here's her debut debut solo release it's, it's the ep's called with love J, and the lead single is fly featuring fabulous yeah fabulous fabulous i know yeah, i need to stop calling fab. it fabulous uh, <laughs> <laughs> um and she is with i'm not sure how you pronounce it is it cordell it's like cordell something like that or you might be right cordell but this is like kind of a company that was recently bought by a new ownership it mm-hmm. might even be her boyfriend who right. she just recently came out and was like yes i'm dating this right. dude tyler kwan right. um but they own it yeah and um they have a girl group playback who i i i'm a fan of uh, i had a friend who was like working with them a lot um yeah just uh it's a new company but they you know they kind of are putting jessica yeah. on it and here's about, here's her yeah. debut release she's, she's for sure you know the the star <laughs> well, now she is, of, yeah. of the label. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what did you, what did you think of Fly? Judging from the teaser and then seeing the full release. Well, I thought this could go one of two ways. I thought it was either going to be uh, some. I, I heard Fabulous was going to be on it, you know, mm-hmm. and I think we talked about it too. It was going to m- maybe be some type of like hard hitting hip hop dance maybe track. Maybe something pop. just like a bit more urban kind of like the bo- like yeah kind of like the boys maybe but um, I thought it could go obviously that this way. was not like <laughs> right or I thought I thought it was maybe going to go in more of a uh, lighter mm-hmm. airier pop hip hop beat or something right. which, which is, is which is did. essentially what this was <laughs> yeah very- yeah. The beat, you know, it wasn't mind blowing. It kind of reminded me of times of Taylor Swift's blank space. Um, yeah. But just, but like, you know, she didn't reinvent the wheel with this oh, no. song or anything no. like that. <laughs> but I gotta say, it, it made it made me happy. I was listening it to it. Yeah. I was like, just spread your wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was actually my first reaction too. I was like, I was pleasantly surprised because yeah. um, her. The, her voice has never been my favorite. Right. Um, it's a little too high pitched for me. It's a little too like it's a little too basic for me. Um, and the song itself, I think, is very basic, but in a way that's like, you know, it's very easy listening, and yeah. um, it, it really did make me feel happy listening to it. <laughs> and she was very cute, and she really played into what like she has always been known for, yeah. but maybe kind of being a little like happier. Yeah. Um, Cause she's cause kind she's... of always known as like the ice princess being kind of cold and like, right. you know, not a whole lot of expression going on. But you can't really do that when it's just you, you know, right? Like that doesn't, that might work in a group, you know, when you're the, in a group setting, but right, right, yeah. you can't really sell a whole right. song and video on being icy. But, yeah. I thought it was cute. And, um, I actually really liked the video. It was very colorful. It was very, mm. like, it was very Jessica esque and, you know, it was safe, but like she, she did what she, she you know, does best. And yeah. I thought Fab's part was actually, it like, it wasn't that jarring to me. It actually yeah. flowed pretty well. Oh, yeah, no, and that was um, nice. And, like, Jessica's from the Bay Area, so I, the fact, and Fab's not. Fab's from Brooklyn. So the fact that his verse called out Steph Curry and the Warriors, mm. I thought that was actually <laughs> really cute. Um, I'm not sure if Jessica even follows the league like that, but, you know, I thought it was cute that they, you know. It's a cute. You know, paid homage to an extent to where she's originally from. And um, it's a little. It was a little weird that he wasn't in the video, yeah. and that also they were um, referencing very American um, pop culture yeah. elements. Um, I don't know if anyone I, like the NBA is not like I don't think it's very. It's huge. It's not like China, you know. It's right. um, so I don't know how much of a connection that made. You know, yeah. he not Steph only Curry is pretty famous, right? Uh, yeah, but this is my Korea, <laughs> like going to Korea, there wasn't much like mm. NBA promotion there. Okay. So also, yeah, the fact that he wasn't in it, I, I'm like, you're really not selling the fact that you, <laughs> you have this, you know, fairly well-known American artist on, on the single. Um, and I, so I, well, I and, don't know. <laughs> she filmed it. She filmed it in America too. I was yeah. kind of like, if this was ever a convenient moment, right. this is I it. think like, yeah. So I think like maybe a little bit of that maybe got lost in translation. Sure, so I don't, yeah. I also don't know like 
why, you know, I don't know why I didn't look into why that didn't happen or if there was a specific reason why I would have liked to see him in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, who knows? I will say, you know, I, I kind of, well, I, I think it's an interesting point why almost this is quite, I think, um, it's quite safe because, mm-hmm. you know, and Jessica hasn't had, you know, the best reputation since leaving girls generation. I think she kind of, she's probably suffered more in the grand scheme of things. If you're comparing the two, right, um, right. you know, a lot of people thought she, you know, wasn't being grateful for it or, or something, you know, something on her. So I think this song is more or less what she needed to kind of yeah, yeah. get maybe back in the, from what I'm seeing, it's doing quite well in the charts right. in Korea. I think I saw the album top 20 on iTunes in America. Yeah. Um, you know, it's doing quite, I think, I think this is what she needed. I think yeah. there'll be time, you know, or I, I actually personally hope there's time for more creative expression yeah. and growth and development. Right. Um, I think thematically this really fit where she is in her life right now. Yeah. Um, just, I, I like that the out, the EP was very, you know, positive as a whole. Yeah. Um, I think sonically the first three tracks are all very similar. I mm. liked the last track a lot. Dear diary. That was a um, bit more of like a, like a loungy R and B sound, maybe a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Um, Love me the same. Uh, I like that one too. I like that one too. That um, one was interesting. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I mean, you know, I I think this is. I feel like this is like what she needed to do. You know, just kind of like mm-hmm. get back in public, get back in the good graces. Yeah. You know, as a entertainer, and then you know, move forward ahead. I mean, I would love to see her do some like boss anthem where she's like I'm the ice princess right, da, da, right. Da. yeah something like run devil run maybe yeah. to that extent give me that Kesha yeah, demo yeah I, I, I liked you know I liked her vibe in that video a lot actually so right so not enough of that in K-pop right females. you know that's what I'm saying I'm saying embrace yeah, who you are I can are. see her definitely pulling that off so <laughs> next concept Jessica yeah 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 Um. so yeah let us know what you guys yeah, think yeah please and, then- and like you you knew, you knew this was coming. Let us know what you think of that. And if you have a preference between Tiffany and Jessica solos, Ooh. you know, throw that out there too. Yeah. I actually love both. Um, I do too. I think, you know, it, they just fit both artists, you know, respectively. But I like that kind of 80s Carly Rae vibe. So if I had a and pick, Tiffany. I'd go with Tiffany. I feel like her her whole concept was a bit more alluring, you know. Sure. I think she she went for it a little more, mm-hmm. I would say, with like yeah. doing something different. It was a little bit different. Aside yeah, for from, sure. you know, and that's a very I feel like SM is very on that track of being like if you're going to release a solo thing, this better be something very different than right. like, you know, what yeah, which, which SM is a good Yeah, has actually surprised me this year and yeah, last year. Uh, I know they're really they're really kind of coming for it. Mm-hmm. So, I'm into it, SM, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, keep, yeah, keep doing it. Yeah. All right. Who's number two on the musics? Can we go into G Soul? Of course the we can. The male soloist. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. The longtime um, trainee and uh, uh-huh. artist under JYP, but I guess technically Studio J, a sub- subsidiary. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, That's interesting. But I mean, like, everyone still. No one says like, oh, he's a Studio J artist. He's he's JYP. <laughs> JYP. Um, so he's he's only I think twenty seven, twenty eight, but he's been around for like yeah. years and years. It feels like because it took him so long to even like fully release a, yeah. an official EP in Korea because right. he was you know covering American songs for a while, doing yeah. doing opening acts for like Wonder Girls and like doing just <sighs> a lot of stuff within New York. Um, he's like he's period, like K pop's yeah. like. Bigfoot, I feel like he he's like always been mysterious, like yeah, in the background, yeah, yeah. till he finally. It's always came like, where is where has he been? Or oh, I haven't heard from him in a couple years. Yeah. So, yeah, but um, he is very much R and B and um, threw in a little acoustic. This so in his new EP or it's not an EP, right? It's uh, no, it's, it's not, two two new singles. Two new singles, right? We got we got far far away, and where do we go from here? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was cool, you know, they gave him two music videos for both of them. Um, well, let's kick it off first. Just w- which one was your favorite and which one do you want to start with? I really, well, I liked both, but I think if I had to choose, um, I like him staying in his kind of solemn R&B mm, realm. Here we go. Um, so I liked Where Do We Go From Here. Yeah. Um, I think that one's a, a little cooler, a little sexier. Yeah, little yeah, for emotional. sure. And I think like 
uh, listeners and fans of G Soul probably are, are a bit more comfortable hearing that yeah. um, kind of sound from him. Um, I liked how it was very raw and honest, and the video was very yeah. simple, just like the song. But you felt a lot from it. Like um, they, he did a split screen of himself mm. and um, this girl whom he still loves, but like he can feel the relationship kind of. Um, stalling and kind of hitting a plateau maybe falling apart he just doesn't know where to go from there and he just feels very you can sense the kind of like aimlessness Hmm. in in the song he's like kind of just wandering yeah in the video he's just kind of walking it's black and white it's very dark and somber um and it both tracks but especially this one is very very relatable and um you know i think a lot of people can you know relate to that feeling of kind of desperate desperation yeah and and you know i I loved like even like the harmonies were kind of like you're you could even be like oh yeah i like feel that like i've been there you know it's like right totally make me feel some kind of way right and And i like that he included the the girl's perspective too for you know Mm, half the time in the video because she's also very restless and doesn't know what to do right Um, relationships are not one-way streets people yeah so i appreciated that (laughs) um i don't know if because i know you maybe kind of like things are a little bit more um a bit more upbeat i don't know if how you feel I mean, in this situation if you like far far away more well i think i think i think where do we go from here is 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 my as the track i like more oh, of cool. the two yeah. oh yay for agreeing Natina, I, I love getting emo i love i love some sad getting in music. your feels yeah i mean k-pop yeah i mean k-pop typically isn't what i would go for if i'm you know in that kind of mood but sometimes yeah, yeah. you never know but you know, on the flip side, far, far away, I feel like it's just that is a classic summary, you yeah. know, like feel good <laughs> kind of type of yeah. track. Yeah, it's, I don't know, this this track was, in video was weird for me because I felt like even though it was upbeat and he was like, well, I don't have any more fucks to give because I'm not with her anymore and she's gone and you're she's never coming back. There was still a sense of like loneliness and mm. kind of like, well, like I'm just it's just it is what it is. It, was, it, yeah. it didn't feel like happy, though. Oh, he was almost kind of like I want to think he was almost like delirious in the video because there was like a freaking giant bunny suit yeah. running right. around. It With was almost like, yeah. are you in your right mind right now? I don't know. And maybe <laughs> I don't it's... know. And he was like he had this puppy who was like his only friend. I don't know. <laughs> right. I mean, I wasn't. Now talking it out makes me think the videos are related. At first, I didn't think they were, but right. now I think maybe they're like, yeah, maybe that's like the part two maybe, to like yeah. this. And um, I didn't, I wasn't sure because that was I watched that one first. I felt like that. So did I. Almost felt like the lead single. Yeah, that's maybe. what. I, yeah, so it I has more views on YouTube too. Yeah, yeah, but I also think maybe it's because it is kind of like more up tempo and the yeah. you know I think people gravitate toward that acoustic beachy sound more yeah. so. So. Um, yeah. it's, e- it's easier to listen to, I guess. And, you know, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I, uh, I like that. Well, you know, I, I, I mean, I think they did their best by trying to get Jisoo to cover both his bases. It's like yeah. this, this R&B yeah. sound, you know, it's not only just a nice fit on you because mm-hmm. that's who you kind of are as a vocalist, but it's a nice, um, it's very trendy. I think enough. Yeah. The I was going to say it is. A, that's, yeah. That's the perfect word. I think it is more trendy. Um, I I mean I I kind of miss his um, pop R and B sound where mm. with with um, the single yeah. You. Yeah, you I love a, You so I much know. but yeah. you know I guess like he kind of took it you in know, a new place um, yeah in terms of I guess his usual R and B sound he slowed it down a lot and went with you know the full on mm. somber dark sound and yeah. then he had like the poppier acoustic sound right right right. if they're like okay in case people you know the sun's coming out it's getting warmer in case not that new york is at all like that yeah I'm in a sweater we're, we're yeah, both we don't in know sweaters. About that life. <laughs> oh my gosh but <laughs> <laughs> that's neither here nor there but yeah in case they're like it's getting warmer you know it's springtime he has this sort of you know acoustic leaning you mm-hmm. know sort of feel bet slightly better even if it does sort of have that yeah yeah sort of yeah take it's on still it, like so. Kind, I guess like kind of optimistic you know yeah. despite coming out of a relationship <laughs> so so I think he's done I think they did a nice job kind of spreading him where he might 
I hope these songs do well for him. I really want right. to see G Soul, you know, at the top. Right, right, right. But um, yeah. No, he deserves we'll it. He's worked so hard. I, I think know. That he's been still s- pretty consistent, despite just kind of like, uh, not having like a super clear kind of promotion right. path. You know, it's not. <laughs> the traditional you know promotion path so but I um i really love i really like both yeah i do i really hope it works out for him i'm just like i'm rooting for you G-Soul. it's almost like any g soul news is good news <laughs> yeah you know, like i just want to hear more from him more <laughs> consistently me too so, but he's done you know he's released some stuff you know between last year and now yeah so it's all so, good signs we're rooting for you g soul keep it up yeah and last but not least. Certainly not least, least. The ladies of AOA. The controversial ladies of <laughs> AOA. Who are back with their new um, EP called Good Luck. And its title track is a brassy kind of... Not not a huge banger like I was sort of expecting them to come out mm-hmm. with. But um, they're it's still here. Very, still very good. You like it? I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Cool. Because it's. I was not. I'm, I think this is one. Well, I think this was their first song. If you remember, oh gosh, it was 2014 mm-hmm. when they really broke out with like Brave Brothers, and they had right. like um, some really catchy. And they worked with him for like four or five singles or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, they kept kind of bringing very, in my opinion, somewhat similar bangers. Some, you know, they just you knew they were gonna bring a banger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But here they are with something a little more, a little more mellow, a little more brassy, a little different. It's got a, it's a different producer this time, and um, yeah, it's just, it's got, it's got a, it's got a different feel to it, and I, and I'm digging it. I think it sounds more, I think it sounds sophisticated, but like still does. being like trendy pop sound, mm-hmm. and um, I, I, I don't have like a, whole, I don't really have any negative things to say about it. I thought you know no. the 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 rap breakdown was nice. Yeah. Um, I thought they really served it in the video. Oh, the video's so awesome. <laughs> this, and it, please enlighten the listeners if they haven't seen it, what the yes. video theme is. Well, yes, it's about, well, it's themed off Baywatch, a classic TV show, obviously from the 80s and 90s. Um, but, and you know, they're wearing, you know, the red bathing suits. Baywatch is like back in, back in vogue now because they're mm-hmm. making a reboot TV show of it, which I want them to have a cameo in they simply <laughs> must it's already a really international movie they got priyanka chopra from india and mm-hmm. belinda from mexico and it was like efron and the rock and yeah. so i'm really into this but i think the the standout thing here with aoa with me at least is kind of how for the first time we're really seeing them not be so lovelorn so focus on boys but like yes. they're saying like yo girls on top and like you know good luck if this, like this you know, felt like, like a bachelorette party yeah. weekend where they're like ah, let's, let's hit the beach look sexy <laughs> and then at night we're gonna go out not worry about boys and just drink martinis granted i, I highly doubt what was in their martini glass was an actual cosmo or, or a martini <laughs> right but it was it was cute i love the concept me too and i loved all their looks Oh, yeah, so um, many great looks. You know, whether it was from the red bathing suits to their individual, you know, going out looks. Yeah. I love that G, Girls Night Out GNO concept. <laughs> um, I will say that right off the bat, though, I was a little weirded, weirded out from, like, the whole, like, endorsement feel I got from oh, it. Oh, the like, Sprite can right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, right mm-hmm. away. I was like, is this a commercial? Yeah. That was a little And, and then, like, of course, Sally Hong is, like, the face of the group. And yeah. she's so gorgeous. And she's a model endorser for everything. <laughs> and I was like, this feels like a commercial for her. Mm-hmm. You know? and But it makes sense when you're the visual of the group. And, yeah. like, she had a they lot wanted, of time. She had a lot of front front and center time yeah. which i don't think anyone is complaining about unless you think that yours <laughs> your one and only yeah, favorite member is not getting uh-huh. your bias is not getting enough face time but you know with every with every group that's always going to be an issue yeah and and you know i i think they were they were giving off if anything you know that there was a really strong image there you know yeah. lifeguards aren't weak people right. there they are you know they, they went from mini skirt which was you know about you know 
putting on or it was about the clothes yeah. you know or, or they had a song called short hair and you know things that are and this time they're like you know we're lifeguards we're you know right strong we're the people saving your lives you know and right like, right you know I, I loved the the empowering feel and you know it, it was cool in, in that sense i think and you know um yeah, they definitely seem a bit more grown up. Um, yeah, I think it's a nice a nice move for them. Yeah. I so I hope they continue to go in that direction. Yeah. A um, little less like cutesy girls and a little bit more, you know, you know, badass. Right. You know. And, you know, it, it kind of this comeback comes at an interesting point because they're kind of under fire at least. You know, every everything is a controversy in K-pop. And, right, know, right. We'd be remiss if we didn't just mention it real quickly. But they have a reality show right now to kind of tie in with the promotions and everything. And and um, uh, Jimin, the leader, rapper, and So Hyun, who we were talking about before, uh, are kind of – there was this moment on this television – their reality show where they were kind of looking at his prominent historical figures, not just from Korea but from around the world, mm-hmm. like Abraham Lincoln and such. And I guess they, they didn't recognize any of them or, or they seemed like they were – joking or mm-hmm. you know but basically th- there's been a lot of backlash and they even at their at their comeback showcase wherever where they were premiering the new music they you know those two members were, were crying on stage saying we're, we're really sorry and we'll be better about this in the future oh and we'll God. make you guys proud i'm like rolling my eyes so you hard are right you now. are here's the thing i i took it as like i'm like oh we can't take it this serious like these shows are for entertainment and it's for, you know, I, I personally feel like they were just doing it up just to like mm-hmm. be like, oh, we have nothing else to talk about on this episode. Let's like be silly. Right. <laughs> you, you're you rolling your eyes just period at all. Out of all things to, to <laughs> like have a hoopla over, like. I'm shocked by it too, but I'm. I'm not. Okay. I'm not spending hours <laughs> training and in the studio. And even I don't know a lot of these right. historical. F- these are not things you talk about all the time. Like. That's legitimate. They're not in a classroom all the time. We are many years removed <laughs> from a high school classroom or a history class. Um, I also don't know exactly which historical figures they didn't know. If they didn't know, like, I don't know, like. A Korean, you know, leader whom everyone should know. Me, I would get like, wow, how could they not know that? But I don't. From what I understand, it, they were pretty obvious people, but like there were a lot of people they didn't know. Yeah. So maybe it was just overwhelming. Lots also, of like, names. Are you really expecting K-pop idols to be like? really well versed in historical figures if that's if that's what you're expecting then i'm sorry you're like following the wrong industry (laughs) and your expectations are extremely warped and the fact that they were crying about this whether it's fake or real tears um is a bit ridiculous well right and that's the thing too is that like if they don't maybe they don't know history but maybe they know a lot about marine biology and like I mean, and that's the thing that like that's the you don't thing expect they really, you don't you expect know? professional athletes to be talking about things that they are not surrounded oh, right. like by all the time <laughs> like if it were a professor at a college and he did not know these people then i would be like okay that's kind of a problem but right, i right. don't really i don't <laughs> give to like shits whether they know like you know if this person or that person if you don't know a veteran singer in your industry that's that i would actually be a bit more concerned about than not knowing a like yeah (laughs) no it's it's kind of apples and oranges in this case i mean yeah i I think it's a little crazy i mean i I was i was like looking a little into this and like i was reading reports that like uh like like outlets were reaching out to professors and asking them if they thought it was a controversy and a lot of them actually didn't say or at least one they're probably like wait (laughs) who are these people maybe my granddaughter or niece knows who these people are i don't think they preoccupy themselves with this well that's the thing is that you know haters are gonna hate uh it clear you know with if they weren't famous, people wouldn't be talking about this. Right, so. and that's always the case. Hey. You know, these are such, like, mundane situations. And, like, you know. Tina has no time for this, I okay? No, no, these are, like, everyday flubs that happen with, like, imagine. Like, if they oh. were to only overhear, like, the dumb things that, like, regular people say all the time. It's just that you're famous and you have a microscope on you and that's everything it. is just magnified. So. Especially the negative things, so. 
So that's our take on the AOA. I hope they say something super smart within the next week and <laughs> they'll be like, yeah. wow. <laughs> right. I did not know they knew this and this about A, B, and C. <laughs> yeah, whip out your knowledge about, yeah. you know, microclimates and, For you know, real. the Southeast Pacific right. region. Exactly. Do it. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's our music section. Um, Tina, I wanted to ask what you thought about this because I'm thinking <laughs> about throwing on a poll on Fuse.tv asking with our top with the top three music releases that we're talking about, having fans, having listeners vote on which one they like the most. And yeah. and then and then we'll respond to that next on next episode. You know, I you only get one week I to I think that's a good about. idea. Just because I not everyone has an easy way to um I guess express their views to us. Yeah. Like, we might, well, like we're heavily uh, Twitter users, but not everyone uses Twitter yeah. and in the same ways that we do. So I think that's a good way to kind of, you know, um, get everyone into into one place easily. Cool. So yeah, you guys leave us uh, leave us your thoughts on the poll, and then we'll of course respond to that on next week's episode. Yeah. It, are you Team Jessica, Team Gisol, or Team AOA? Yes. Let us know. But before we do that, or yeah, obviously, before we do that, it's now time to get into some charts. Charts time. Charts time. Okay, where we look interested. at the, the top five songs on the U.S. iTunes K-pop charts. And here we go. Coming at number five is Tiffany, I Just Want to Dance. Yeah. Was she on last week? I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't think she had risen at that I point. I think last week was still like a good two or three tracks were from BTS. Yeah, no, definitely. I have a feeling we'll see them. Moving on, because at number four is Epilogue, Young Forever by BTS, one of the new tracks off there. Yeah, great the Most track. Beautiful Moment in Life, Young Forever album, which we talked about earlier. Number three is none other than our girls AOA with Good Luck, which, nice. look at them doing quite well in America. I mean, yeah. They're, they're, I think there's, I think they're clicking here. I think yeah. they're starting to click here. So that's kind of their song. Their album's the top K-pop album in America right now. If I'm looking at that chart. Very impressive. Number two is BTS's Fire, which was last week's number one. Right. Oh wow, I didn't think it slipped to number two ever. <laughs> everyone loves that track. Well, it's kind of interesting because number one is Save, Save Me by Me. BTS. Okay. And of course, that music video just dropped yesterday. So uh, good. And we love it. Uh, yeah. I really love how they did that one take The one shot. take was... Oh, so they, good. It's, you think one take videos would be <laughs> very, very boring. Right. But not, not no, they, they, they did really well with, you know, whether it's wide shots or close-ups. And yeah. um, it was very interesting how they were able to showcase the choreography yeah. and all the members all while doing it in one take. Yeah, and you know, it wasn't, I think I think K-pop is really into this one take idea, but a lot of times they're like, you know, look at someone like Taeyang's ring a linga video. Mm. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Like, that was probably two takes. Because okay. at one point, right, like right, right. somehow we're, he's outside and then he's in a hallway. Like, I'm like, okay, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's really impressive, but I think it was actually like two takes. You know, yeah. everyone got a break. But this one I really do think... Um, yeah, or like I think EXO and it was tried just so it once. Simple, you know. Yeah, they were but it in worked. like they were in like a field. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so weird. And they clearly like knew where where their spaces were yes, and like the, where to the stand. The spacing composition was yeah. on. Yeah, shout out to like the videographers. Like I yeah, thought the it was producers. I thought that was great. Simple but so effective, and I loved it once yeah. again. I got yeah. BTS. They really haven't it. done wrong at all so far. <laughs> I know. For crying out loud, man, they've just been killing it these last two years. Yeah. So I'm really so excited yeah. to see them at KCON. Glad they're still holding strong if on you guys, iTunes. If you guys are, are, are coming to, quick shout out, if you guys are coming to KCON Los Angeles, Tina and I will both be there. So you Hopefully. better come meet us. Yes, we're <laughs> hoping it all works out. But um, okay, maybe I'm jumping the gun a little, but... <laughs> But yes, now let's get right into our deep cut section where we talk about something buzzing in the K-pop community. This one just recently hit. I thought it was kind of interesting. We got, you know, we, we've talked about Cube Entertainment, I feel like, a lot. They got brought, brought up a lot in this show, but um, it's kind of interesting. We got some shade throwing from Beast Yoseb. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, Correct Yosef, yeah. <laughs> Okay, just my good job. I'm always... Yosa the cutie pie. Yosa the cutie pie. And I would say he seems to be throwing a ton of shade at, at, at Cube. So so the, the back story is, is that um, he 
had uh he was at an he had like some type of schedule or, or he was promoting something with this really legendary um singer her name is um her name is Ju or Joe Sumi I believe and she's like you know a really legendary singer um and Hana who's also under Cube under 4 minute also very popular she was on a reality show talking about um animals <laughs> or something like that so they both had something going on, but there was a lot of media play for Hana and, you know, Cube put out, you know, promoting the mm-hmm. appearance and what was going on. And I remember hearing about Hana's uh, appearance on, you know, just reading K-pop news, right. but I didn't know about Yosebs. Um, so he wrote a tweet that said, um, he wrote a tweet to his company that said, Ayo Cube, how have you been? This is all translated in Korean, more mm-hmm. or less. Uh, how have you been? Today I sang with Jo Sumi. Sung Seg Min Nim. Sung Seg Nim, yeah. Yeah. Try my best with the trans pronunciation. Yeah, I know you're killing it. <laughs> um, I hope so. It looks like you didn't know, so I'm leaving a comment. Heart, have a nice Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Which to me, I don't think he was actually wishing them a nice Friday. No, it was it's just blatant <laughs> sarcasm. And yes. this is actually it's funny that it was him because out of all the members of Beast, I can see Yosub doing this because his image is very like Hey guys, you know, like he's very f- likable and you know charming and cute, and you don't think he would have negativity. The sassy side. He's very sassy, and <laughs> there, were, there was a lot of there was a lot of um, judgment in that in that tone on, yeah. on in that tweet. Of course, you know, Beast in a interesting space right now. So they just had member Young Sung mm-hmm. leave the group. Mm-hmm. Um, and now Which is a huge, huge deal. Like yeah. even though people kind of saw, saw it coming, right. um, just for some background, he you know didn't look super into group promotions for yeah. a while, and he was doing stuff just kind of alienating himself from the group. And people were kind of speculating something was going on, and then he actually did officially depart from the group. Um, so he's going to continue as a solo artist. Yeah. So there has been conversation about if he's leaving because he just doesn't like being a group anymore or because cube didn't do enough to promote them the way that he wanted, or there was just a lot of conversation about how cube is treating um, yeah. their artists and the general rapport between the artists yeah. and the label. Yeah. 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 So this kind of doesn't seem to be a good sign. <laughs> no, because this, uh, this doesn't usually happen. Things are very behind closed doors yeah. um, when it's it comes so to sensitive. label relations because you never want, because Asia is all about like saving face and you right. never want to embarrass, um, especially anyone who's above you technically, yeah, like is, authoritative pe- roles. Right. And th- this has kind of a, a culture, yeah, like Tina was saying, a, like a cultural significance here. And, you know, especially just going about it on Twitter, which I think is kind of, and publicly, you know, and right. it's kind of, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm torn because on one hand, I'm kind of, I, I guess I'm happy to see at least some type of speaking out. You, you don't just do this the first time someone burns you, you know, like right, it seems right. like this is something that's maybe, you know, burning within him. It's been him biting and, at him yeah, for a while. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I feel like I, I can, I only remember something somewhat similar happening maybe like a year ago when Lizzie from After School responded to a fan on Twitter who said, or on Instagram or something that said like, oh, we want an after school come back. And she said, uh, we can't because the record company's broke or some, or there's no money. And I'm like, damn. I was like, that wasn't even shade. That was basically like, <laughs> Well, like <laughs> they messed up. Statement. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not happening. You but, know, but I, but the, it was very do you transparency like, isn't like always. It's not always there in K-pop, right? So like, and granted, this really what this I wouldn't say this is transparency. This was just like major shade yeah. and like. But the thing is, what I what I love about this is he can't so even. You love te- it. I love it. He can't even get in trouble for this because, <laughs> like, if in the if you're just reading it in a in the literal sense, right? He, he could just be like. Oh, like you just forgot. Just letting you know. Bye. Like they Heart. can't. Right. Because like that's the thing. That's what's so genius about it. He can't mm. actually get in trouble. Oh, you're sick. Because like at the He's end of the day, me. they didn't promote a performance of substance. They promoted, you know, with animals. Right. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so that's the thing. I mean, and like they never responded, which is also fun. I just, I don't. I also don't know like 
how much activity Cube's official Twitter gets and if they even focus on that. Yeah. So maybe he did that because he f- figured that like it wouldn't really amount to any drama. Sure, right. It's not it's like, not he, like he did it on like a huge platform in Korea. Yeah, ex- I was just about to say it wasn't on national television right. or being like being you know or, or he wasn't putting any, anybody on blast on like yeah. a major platform where all like there be ten times more eyes. But it, it, it was public, you know, mm-hmm. so that, that's one thing. And, you know, I, I think, you know, and obviously K-pop fans are very, you know, intense and, and watch all these moves. So, right. you know, it'd be one thing to, you know, he clearly knew fans would see it. And if anything, right. it's I feel like this is almost throwing a bone to fans and being like, <laughs> and being like, hey, something's up. Just right. so you guys know. Just so you know, if there's maybe any... If you're sensing any um, weirdness happening or right. whatever, <laughs> or something that may come up in the future, yeah. just know that we are aware of any management, you know, yeah. awkwardness or well, issues. Right. Yeah. Which sucks to see because uh, we said this so many times on previous episodes. Cube artists are so consistent. Yeah. They're so talented. They work so hard. We love them. Um, and you know, fans love them. And you know, it just sucks to see that. There's just a lot of friction um, within the label right now. Yeah, so something is something is weird. Yeah, um, yeah and there's been kind of no real news about mm-hmm. where Beast is going next. You know, there, there. I, I saw like these reports are like, oh, they were planning to come back, but it was actually for Japan. And it's like, oh, come on, like right, right, the right. Beast brand is 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 it needs some love it, right, right now. Right. Yeah, so. and they they did release you know a dance uh, like a hip hop dance track um and video in japan like a couple months ago Uh, um i don't think they need to go back so they need (laughs) they need to come on back to seoul come on (laughs) let's let's take care of business guys so they they gotta redeem themselves for that last ep (laughs) oh yeah yeah and we say that in the most loving way possible yes because we know that they are capable much better than that yes please oh my gosh do not remind me of yeah 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 oh lord Oh Lord is is correct. So, so but li- I think I think we're both like <laughs> on board with the shady tweet, and that yeah. you know at least it's it's more of just like an indirect way of telling fans that you know yeah and that they're know, aware of any lack of promotion from Cube. And I and I don't think this comes off in like an entitled way or like no. a bratty way. Like no. why aren't you promoting me? It sounds like there's like hey, I'm doing something really cool right. here. Come on. Right, I hear you. <laughs> like you got like, and and, and clearly it it must have happened in the past, and we probably didn't even know about it because they clearly weren't promoting right, it. Yeah. So maybe the writing has been on the wall for a moment, and we just weren't reading. Right. But I love, I just love that Yosub did it, and I and like not I, I do not too. like Chun Young because Chun Young's more of the like, oh, he's like the kind of, you know. The expressionless rapper who, like, you know, yeah. just doesn't he just focus on his work, but you know, I can totally see him getting annoyed, easily annoyed, or something like right, that. But, the but then, like, at B. right, but then, like, you know, and then Dujun's the leader, but Dujun's also like the really, like, kind of more story, like, even though he's very friendly, he's more like kind of a bit more serious yeah. and like mature or whatever. And like, Yosub's mm. like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I know, he's like, he's like, I know I look cute, <laughs> I but inside, I know, I love it. So, but. if you're living for this shade, let us know, <laughs> as always, or about any of the topics we talk about here on K-Stop, because we love hearing from you guys, and you might be featured in a future episode. Yeah, please tweet us. So listen to all the music that we talked about this week uh, on our YouTube playlist on Fuse.TV. Vote on which one you like the most. Uh, we'll see who wins next week. And, um, yeah, we'll be um, we'll talk to you guys next week. Hit us up Twitter, Facebook, iTunes. Um, what else Fuse is there? TV. Fuse TV. <laughs> of course. Yes. It's all there for you. We love talking to you guys. And um, until next week, this until has been Jeff. And this is Tina. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>